start your opening statement. Okay. The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequate, adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting, recorded, meeting recordings may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel, as well as the ZBA webpage. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the ZBA and paneled for this meeting tonight. Steve Judge, I'm here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Meadows? Here. Mr. Barrick? Here. Also in attendance tonight is Maureen Pollock, planner, and Dave Washevitz, senior building inspector. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or to gather additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision in the, with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, ZBA FY 2021, Dash 21, Narian Sampath requests a special permit in order to allow a non-owner occupied two-family dwelling on a pre-existing non-conforming lot under, <clears throat> under sections 3.3211, 9.2, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 2123 Kendrick Place, map 14A, parcel 2241, general residence R. G zone. ZBA FY 2021-17, College Street 1957 LLC, requesting a special permit in order to allow a change of use from a one family detached dwelling to a non-owner occupied duplex dwelling, extension and alteration of the lot coverage and building area 
on a pre-existing non-conforming lot, modification of the required additional lot area and slash family under dimensional regulations. Footnote A, section 3.211, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 187 College Street, map 14B, parcel 169, General Residence RG Zoning District. This is continued from May, our meeting on May 27th, 2021. After that, we have public comment period, other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours, and adjournment. Um, the first order of business on the agenda is ZBA 2021-21, but I would like to um, move quickly to dispose of um, FY 2021-17, College Street 1957, LLC. The applicant has requested a continuation until August, until our August meeting uh, on, the, on the grounds that they are gone from, uh, they could not attend. Uh, this seems to, it's normally something we do um, ministerially at a meeting, just, just the chair acknowledges it. But since we have a full panel here, um, that is something I put to, I would entertain a motion that we uh, continue this to a date certain. Our meeting is August, is it 12th, Maureen? August 12th, that this, I would entertain a motion to move, to continue this matter until August 12th. At, at six o'clock? Yes, at six o'clock. Mr. Maxfield? Uh, so so moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, roll call vote on this would be, um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Uh, we, there were only four members for this panel. Uh, for, uh, oh no. I, Mr. Barrick, excuse me. You're here for this, precisely. Am, and that's why I'm here I want for this. And it's not clear to me that I can be here August 12th. Uh, I'm not sure. So we'll. We'll talk about that right after we finish this vote. How's that? Well, I, I actually, so and, and if, then, if he's not available, uh, this would be a good opportunity to talk about what date would be avail you would be available. Oh, uh, let me check my calendar for August 12th. And so it would be virtual via Zoom. OK, hold on. It'll take me a minute. I'll take the prerogative to su suspend the vote while we figure out exactly what date we're continuing this to. I, I believe I could do an August 12th meeting. Okay. And does that work with other members? Okay. Mr. Meadows, does that work for you? As far as I know it does, as long as we're Zoom, then that, that's functional for me. Okay. All right. We're, and we will be Zoom. Okay. So we'll resume the vote. And the vote is with you, Mr. Barrick. And my vote is aye. All right. The motion carries. Uh, the motion, the application is continued till uh, August 12th at six o'clock. Thank you. Great. Um, and just to say, so Peter, if you're welcome to stay in the meeting tonight, but since you're not on the panel for the next case, uh, you can you can leave the meeting if you if you have. I I, I will leave the meeting. Okay. <laughs> and we, we wish the best to all of you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Bye, bye. So the first order of business tonight is a public hearing on ZBA 2021-21, Narian Sampath requesting a special permit in order to allow a non-owner occupied two-family dwelling on a pre-existing non-conforming lot under sections 3.3211, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 2123 Kendrick Place, map 14A, parcel 241, general residence RG zone. The members sitting on this panel are myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Meadows. Um, and since this a decision to approve a special permit requires four affirmative votes. We have only, um, we have only four members uh, on sitting on this panel. So this 
application will require a unanimous vote of the ZBA in order to be approved. Are there any disclosures? If not, the site's visit was conducted on Monday, June 7th. Um, we toured the property. Uh, we entered the house, saw the first floor, the second floor. Uh, Mr. Sampath um, described his, um, what he wishes to do with the house and why he bought the house. Um, we walked up through the back door out to the patio, saw the patio and the, um, the walkway. We came around to the front of the, walked through the house again, came around to the front, viewed the front of the house, talked to him about parking, talk, looked at the garage um, and looked at the air, those areas. Uh, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much what we discussed at the site visit. I don't know if any other member has anything else that they wish to add for the site visit. Okay, the following submissions have been received by the town staff. The applicant has submitted a ZBA application, a management plan, additional information required for apartments, site plan prepared by Randall Iser, dated September 12th, 2018, a floor plan prepared by the applicant dated May 2021, uh, a parking plan, a lease agreement, a complaints response plan, and photographs of both the interior and exterior of the property. The staff has submissions of a zoning map, a property map, an aerial map, a topography map, a project application report dated June 30th, 2020. The applicant is requesting waivers from section 3.16 building plans of the ZBA rules and regulations which require a Massachusetts licensed architect or professional designer to prepare, prepare the floor plan. Uh, we had previously received, he's, he has submitted a floor plan that we had previously approved in 2018 when we offered, when we approved special permit 2018-34. And there are no changes to that floor plan. A waiver for a landscape plan, dimensional plan for parking spaces and a signed plan. Uh, we also have received one public comment from a, Miss, a Ms. Joan Griswold, which was submitted via email on Monday, June, uh, July 5th. Uh, that's all the submissions. Um, Mr. Sampath, uh, do you wish to proceed? Yes, please. So please identify yourself for the record uh, and how much, and let us know how much time you think you'll need for your presentation. Uh, hi, my name is Narayan Sampath. I live at 23 Kendrick Place, Amherst, Massachusetts. And I'm guessing 30 minutes. I'm not sure. You want me to present uh, my case for the house is, or run the slides through or what would you like me to do? Yeah, um, what, whatever you want to, I, I, the key thing is for you to, is to tell us what you wish to do. Sure. Have, sure. More, have more discussion than we had at the site visit. Run through. Sure. I think it's important in this case for you to go through and talk about why you bought the house and why you're asking for the, the um, special permit for an, a non-owner occupied um, to two family home and um, talk about what your, your goals are. I sure, think there's yeah. not a lot, and then why you don't need any, any changes, why you're not requesting any changes to management or other plans. Sure, sure, thank you. So I'm guessing uh, we would need at least 30 minutes depending on how many questions uh, we have. So, but before I start, I wanna say thank you to Maureen for all the help that she's given me over the last, uh, I guess, month or so in getting all the paperwork together. So thank you, Maureen. Okay. No okay, so, um, so I've been live. I used to live in South Amherst uh, at 46 Palmer Lane since 2013, since the summer of 2013, and over the pandemic, like uh, with all my, among all the other challenges that people faced, my um, my wife and I went separate ways. So I signed a site <clears throat> unseen lease with Ian Walsh, the previous owner, back in September, and uh, because I couldn't even tour the place because of COVID and the tenants then um, were not comfortable of anybody visiting. So I cite the site unseen on a place just because it was close to uh, my now ex-wife and I could stay close to my kids who are a mile and a half. Um, and, you know, we didn't want to rock the boat and have a lot of changes for them because they still have their same friends who are actually one on Orchard Street, one on a Woodside and one in the house behind. Um, so it, it really helped with the transition in our kids. So we, I, we moved in in September 
And then um, I wasn't ready to buy a place of my own in Amherst, but looking at the property market, I was very afraid that I was going to get priced out because of the way the market is today and how expensive buying a place at Amherst would be uh, with the way the property market is. And um, I think it was a cold February morning when Ian Walsh, the previous owner, sent us a note saying that he was going to sell the place. Um, and I was uh, going to, I had to think about what to do. And then I figured we did the math and I figured it makes sense for me to make an offer to purchase the place, uh, which uh, he agreed. And we finally closed on uh, April 29th. Um, the tenants at 21 Kendrick Place um, are a couple who one of them is a librarian at the Jones Library and we have a lease till the end of August and they intend to continue as well because of the location. Um, I have no intention of moving anywhere in the near future I, I, because like uh, I mentioned in my application, my kids are 11 and 14 at the Crocker Farm Elementary School and the high school. Um, I, the place has been very um, helpful for us in our transition and the kids' lives has not changed a whole lot. Uh, but when um, we went through the paperwork for closing the house, uh, I was notified by my lawyer saying that there's this um, zoning application which expires or is not in place when there's change of ownership. So which prompted me to um, apply uh, for this permit uh, just so that to have it in place because it was recently approved rather than go through, let's say five, six, seven years. I don't, if and when I plan to move rather than go through the whole process, I wanted to uh, uh, use the same application because nothing much is changing. I have no intention of moving in the near future. Um, I, like I mentioned in my application, I work at Holyoke Community College. I am the CFO and the Vice President for Administration and Finance. Um, it's pretty close, about 20 minutes from um, where I live. And previously I was to work at UMass Amherst. So I'm very vested in the area with all our friends and family here. So um, that's the reason for my application and I'm happy to answer any questions. And, in, uh, and also about the landscaping and taking care of uh, things around the house. Since I don't intend to move anytime in the near future, uh, I will be responsible for snow removal and making sure that uh, you know the the yard is taken care of uh, fortunately we have neighbors who are very interested in I take care of like the snow and the mowing all the part that is not pretty that needs to be pretty whereas our neighbors really like taking care of the dandelions and the flowers so they're helpful as well but uh, as I mentioned in my application if and when I do move I have the contacts of all the individuals who worked with the previous landlord Ian Walsh that I'm more than happy to um, engage if I have to, but I don't foresee that happening in the near future. So Mr. Th Sampath, you realize that if you do move out and it becomes a non-owner occupied, you no longer can be the responsible person for taking care of this. And you have to come notify us if we should approve this application, notify the town, and you may have to come before the ZBA for a hearing to approve a new management plan, to approve perhaps a landscape plan, parking, other things could happen if we approve this. It, you have to, when you become a non-owner occupied um, structure, there will be additional, um, there might be some changes to the, there will be changes to the management plan which need to be approved, okay? Got it. Do you understand that? Okay. I do, I do. If there are any changes, then I would come, come in front of the board and provide the new management plan and the landscaping plan. Yep. Right. Other things. Yep. Um, Mr. Sampath, you, you're proposing no changes to the property, no changes to parking. You have four spaces for parking and uh, with two in the garage and two on, on the driveway. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Um, does anybody have any questions of Mr. Sampath? Oh. Ms. Parks. It, it actually might be for you. Um, mm -hmm. And that is at this time, the house would be considered owner occupied. And, and so the point that you're making is that if Mr. Sampath moves out, then it's no longer owner occupied and that he would then need to come before the board. Well, it would substantially change. The house right now is, is 
non-owner. He's asking for it to be continued to be considered non-owner occupied, even okay. though he is he is there. And so if he moves out and has a tenant, and this becomes non-owner occupied, then things other things have to happen. The management plan must change because as he's no longer there to do that, he's got he and he's represented to us that he would hire additional people to take care of the landscaping, take care of the snow, do other things that that a non-owner that a non um, residential manager would normally do. And so we'd have to come to the board and have that approved either by the board or by the building commissioner if it's seemed, if it's deemed to be insignificant. But those are the, those kinds of things are what he's have to come to the board for. So he's asking for, it's a, this is unusual in that we're having a, an owner occupant ask for his property to be considered non-owner occupant because he may want to move out sometime in the, in the future, but it's undetermined. Yeah, I, I miss I, I, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Sampath. Yeah, Ms. Parks, I also wanted to uh, apply for this because I know, like, for example, Ian, uh, Ian Walsh, the previous landlord, engaged professional um, surveyors to come up with documents, which, you know, is, is a, a, an expensive exercise as well. And since I was not proposing any changes at all, and it was, since it was a relatively new application, so I wanted to put forth my application this time around. Okay. It seems, I mean, the, the point you're making, I, I, I don't want to make your case for you, Mr. Sampath. I mean, that's the job that, for you to do and, and for us to ask questions. But what you're, I think what you're saying is that you, since there are no changes to the land, to the building, to the landscape, to anything, that you don't want to pay the, you don't think you need to pay the extra expense to do this. And you just would like to renew the, the, renew the existing special permit. The, the weird thing is, is that for a special permit of a non-owner occupied in the RG is one case where it, 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 it voids upon transfer of ownership and you have to come back. It's unusual. This isn't, we don't do this with other areas, other zoning districts and with very many other um, uh, types of ownership. But in this case, in the RG district, you have to Come back and get the renew the special permit for change of ownership if you have a non-owner occupied uh, duplex and that's what he is that that's the situation that he's facing so we have a choice um anyway that's the, the, that's what's unique about this kind of this this uh case thank you all right so Mr. just Master, to clarify, know, he's, go, his status not, just to clarify his status is not the status is not changing but by us, if, if we were to approve this, it's still with the caveat that he would have to come back if he were to move out. Yes. And it's also a condition that we're willing to, uh, I think it's a condition that we're, we're going to impose upon the, the um, special permit. Right. And if I may, uh, Ms. Parks and Mr. George, I guess, so well, I'll have to go through the whole application and if there are any changes, of course, like the landscape and the, uh, the management plan, for example, and a few other items in the list would need to be uh, updated uh, when I come to, if and when I come to the board again. Mr. Meadows. I, I, I guess I'm just confused as to why there has to be an application at all. The only Because we have an owner occupied dwelling. I mean, what, why is there a, a need for a request for exemption. Maureen. Maureen. So uh, in the, uh, the this property uh, 21 to 23 Kendrick Place is located in the general residence zoning district. And for owner occupied duplexes, it's allowed, permitted by site plan review and it's, if it's non-owner occupied, it's allowed by special permit. And um, upon the town council some years ago, I, I'm not exactly sure when um, in the last you know, 10 years plus or minus, um, there was a zoning amendment change to require that upon change of ownership uh, a duplex within the general residence would lapse and a, a new special permit would be required 
for a non-owner occupied duplex. Um, and that's only in the general residence zoning district. Um, you know, the previous chair, Mark Parent, when dealing with these applications would repeatedly say, I don't like this, how it's written in the bylaw, um, but it is what it is. And it is something perhaps maybe the town would like to visit uh, revisit um, to see if that really, you know, makes sense opposed to then um, requiring in this scenario, requiring the applicant to resubmit an, a new application, new fee, public hearing, legal ad, all that, or if it would make better sense just to have the new owner come back with an updated management plan and complaint response plan and any other substantial changes. But as the zoning bylaw to date, um, this is the requirement. Um, and so when Mr. Sam Path reached out to the planning department, he had indicated that he, you know, is intending to buy the property with the intention of moving, relocating, you know, in six months to a year because we did talk about, you know, if you want this to be an owner occupied duplex, he had the option of going through the planning board for a site plan review, but he had indicated that he does intend to move in sort of the near to, you know, near future, if you were to think a year from now is in the near future. So uh, we decided that it would make sense in the long run that he could just apply for a special permit for a non-owner occupied duplex since that is sort of the long-term goal. Um, and so that's what is in front of you today. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. It, it, just, it still makes no sense. Yeah, well, we're I just- I hear what you're saying, but it, it does yeah. not make any sense. He, I, he's I, not I, a non-owner uh, occupied dwelling, he's an owner occupied dwelling. Mm -hmm. And as an owner occupied dwelling, it, he's entitled to just a site plan review. And then if he moves, it needs to come to the ZBA, but I don't see that it makes any sense for him to be here at the ZBA now. Mr. Wasevich, you have your hand raised. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking the board shouldn't get hung up on whether or not he lives there. What he's asking for is the ability to be able to leave two months from now if he wanted to and be able to rent that space out. And, and what he's explained already is the fact that all of this information has been provided in the past about three years ago and it was granted to the previous owner to be a non-owner occupied dwelling or a, a duplex. So. That, that's all he's asking is the ability to do that so that he doesn't have to do it, go through the process should his plans change dramatically in a couple of a days or weeks and, and he has to move and doesn't have an option. So this is just to, to pave the road for the future. Um, it's a benefit that the fact that he actually lives there because he'll have a better eye on the property, but uh, don't get hung up on the fact that he does live there. But but the I do hear what you're saying, he Craig. Does live there? Yeah. It's, you know, it, and if is, and if he moves out, then he's going to have to come back to the ZB anyway. And but just for a, a public, but would probably just be for a public meeting to approve a new uh, yeah. management plan. It wouldn't be the whole application. I, mean, I, I think his I think his point is that he's trying to. I think what he's trying to do is to minimize the amount of application cost and headache if he decides to move later on. And I understand yep. your point. When I switched, when I looked at this, I said, why is, why are you doing that? Why is this happening? Um, he's going to live there. Why are we granting him? A, why would we grant him a non-owner occupied building um, special permit? Yeah. And it's only because it, he doesn't want to go through the hassle of, of ha applying for a special permit in two months, six months or a year from now yeah. when the property I, was I, already that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what, I that's cannot... the reason. Yeah, and, I can and understand certainly... that, but let me let me yeah. let me make a different point. Sure. If I in my house decided to um, rent part of the house and 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 say 
and suggest that at some point I may want to move, does that does that make sense for anyone who is an owner in an owner occupied dwelling to come up and do preparatory work in order to avoid having to do it later? And it, it seems to me that it's it's essentially a waste of his time and our time to do this. If I may jump in, Mr. Judge. Yes, yes Mr. Sampath. Yeah, yes. uh, so uh, like you mentioned, you know, when I looked at the application, when I got a copy of the permit and I looked at what, was, what uh, Mr. Ian Walsh had been through and I looked at all the survey plans, for example, that would cost me a couple of thousand dollars to get this whole application together, which is relatively new and, you know, there's no change in place at the moment. So that was one of the main reasons for me to uh, apply because it's a relatively new plan, no changes, I'm not going anywhere and to have it in place. And uh, I think the changes that would happen if and when I were to move, whether it's two months, two years, four years, five years from now, I think there are just three or four documents that would need to be updated that I would have to present to, um, to the zoning board rather than go through the whole process of a parking plan and have a surveyor come in and go through all that paperwork again. And I would like to add that if the board, you know, is inclined to, you know, hear more about this application, you could cert and want, you know, wants to entertain a decision regarding this. You could certainly put a condition on the special permit saying that, you know, the property owner needs to live elsewhere within, you know, six months or a year if, if, if that is of importance that this, you know, truly is a non-owner occupied residence. Um, because, uh, you know, Mr. Sam Path, you know, initially did indicate that this would be a temporary situation and he was just sort of um, preparing for, for the transition of purchasing the home and sort of figuring out where he would be living and, and that, that this would be sort of a temporary thing. It wasn't indicated that this would remain a owner occupied duplex on a permanent basis. It, it was indicated that this was a temporary thing. Um, but, so. Uh, but also uh, uh, Ms. Pollock, I did not know a year ago that I was going to move out and have to find a separate place. You know, we don't know what's going to happen, right? I had no idea that I was going to so, leave my house for eight years from South Amherst to move. So right so now Mr. I have Sam, no yes, plans to move. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you have no plans to move. We understand that. So yeah. I think, look, we have a couple of options here that we should explore and talk about as the board. So let's, there's a good, this is a good opportunity for you to summarize anything you, that you think you need to say to the board and then for the board to discuss amongst ourselves various options and we want to come back to you and see if, uh, get your um, uh, reaction to them. So I'd like to ask you, is there anything else you wanna to present to the board? And then I would like to have a discussion amongst board members about this application. Sure, thank you, Mr. Judge. Uh, yep. All I would like, I would like to just reiterate that um, we are very happy where we live. I don't foresee us moving anytime soon. The only reason I wanted to um, submit the application was because when I saw it in the last week of April, I figured rather than go through the whole process, I would like to piggyback on a relatively new application, a relatively, uh, a new application, which is about three years ago, and, and submit it. Mm -hmm. So I have it in place. If, so, I, I understand. It. So one. Of, so it seems to me that amongst board members and staff, <clears throat> we got a couple of options here to think about this. Number one, I'm not sure that we have the four votes for approving the application. Number that's the first thing. The second thing is the applicant does have the opportunity to to go for a, a site plan review, which is my understanding is is not very costly, and it could be done uh, through the planning, done to the planning board. Is it not? Yep. That option exists. The other option exists is that if the application is approved, we could require as part of the um, as part of any re um, excuse me if this, if site plan review is approved, any wishes to change to a um, to a non-owner occupied rental property and he has to come back for a 
for a uh, um, special permit, we could at that point waive the requirements for a landscape plan, a management plan for a site review if you have a situation where nothing has changed. It is all as it looks like today. There would be an opportunity to for him to request waivers of the things that are expensive and come back in a year or two when he decides he wants to move for a less, and it wouldn't necessarily be as costly as it would be starting from scratch for a special permit. So that is a possibility if you go with site plan review. That if I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that that's I'm not saying that that is assured, but that is a possibility that could be um, done that way without having incurring a lot more costs than that would normally occur. Is that right, Dave? Is that how that would work? Could the board could after it he went to site plan review and he wants to then he wants to become a non owner occupied property, we could waive some of the um, he could ask for waivers of some of the requirements for a special permit. Well, that, that's certainly an option to go that route, um, mm -hmm. but it is more steps for him to do in order to go back to the current status. Well, I shouldn't say current, but yeah. what the previous owner's status was, which was a non-owner occupied duplex. So I right. think that's the thing that he's trying to do now. And it seems it might be more efficient to do it this way now because everything is in place, but that's certainly up to the board to decide. And, right. um, and I understand Meadow's point. Other discussion about where we want to, uh, where the board is headed on this application. Other members have comments or thoughts. Mr. Maxfield. Yeah, I mean, when I think about this, it sounds like um, you know previous board had had dealt with these questions about the merits of this being this is a good area to have a non-owner occupied duplex, and it looks like they had decided yes, this was appropriate. It did. Uh, meet the necessary findings that uh, if we have somebody coming up to us saying, you know, I'd like to keep this, I think any homeowner, if they can have that as an option, would definitely want that. And where, uh, yeah, a, a board, this board had already decided that this was appropriate years ago. And it, it does just sound like a case of if he wants to move in the future and does want to go with this route, I, I think anyone in this position would want to keep that option open. So I, I definitely support um, I support this plan. I, I, I trust the board's judgment from three years ago and, I, and I'm willing to extend that now uh, in this case is where I'm, I'm standing right now. Ms. Parks, do you have any comment? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this application as well. I guess what I was thinking is it's too bad we don't have that management plan so that we could approve this once and for all but I understand if it's owner occupied you don't you're not going to have a management plan yet so no there is I, I mean I know, there's, there's, man, I know I know there's a, a management plan it's um so so Steve what do you no, I'm sorry Mr. Judge what do we what do yep. we need if um if this is approved and Mr. Sampath moves then then what does he need to come back with he would need to come back with a new management plan that talks about everything from uh, having a, uh, a person to contact in case of a problem, having a management plan for the landscaping, for the, uh, for the uh, snow removal, for trash, um, for the lawn, uh, landscaping, I said, um, lighting plan, those kinds of things. They may not change, and he may ask for a waiver since it wouldn't change, but he needed for the typical stuff that a that a non-owner occupied property has to provide as opposed to an owner occupied property. The irony of it is that he, that all those things are included in the management plan that he's putting up as an owner occupied, except that he's function, some of those functions that he wouldn't perform uh, once he, if he sells it, prop, if he moves out of the property. All right. I'm, I'm does that make, does that answer your question? Yes, and are, yes, and and so if this were approved, then there would be a condition that um, he would need to come back um, it when he moves. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. There would need All to right. be a condition that says that, and and it, it would we we can put a condition on. He'd have to do it anyway because the management plan substantially changes. Change. Right? right. So he'd have to come back no matter whether it's a condition or not. But we would put a we should put a condition on it to make it clear. 
Right. So, Mr. Meadows, I can see uh, that I, you, I, you still I, think that this, I still still think think that this is crazy. I think it's crazy. I'm sorry, but if 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 this were if this were a non-owner occupied, uh, I, I would I would feel comfortable with it. But it is owner occupied, and just as though anyone else in town said, "Oh, I, you know, maybe I'll come to the ZBA and see if I can get myself prepped for 20 years from now," uh, I I don't see any point to this. So I'm going to vote no. Mr. Mr. Meadows, may I, can I no, jump no, in? No, no, Mr. Sandpath, no. just a second, yeah. not right now. We're having discussion above the board. And so one option, a good option may be for the applicant to ask for this to be withdrawn. We do need four votes for this. We don't, and we, right now we don't, there are not four votes to approve this. That's one, and then to seek site plan review. Um, you could, and, or you could withdraw and come back at a later point in time with this, but I, but that would be the other option for the applicant is to would ask for it to be withdrawn and then go for site plan review rather than risk a negative determination on a, a rejection of a special uh, permit application, which you, I, nobody wants to have the special permit application defeated. That it keeps you out for two years from, from applying again. Um, any other comments from the board or from staff before we open this up to one last comment from Mr. Sampath? Mr. Washevich. Yeah, I just want to ask Mr. Meadows if he thought there was a benefit to the homeowner not living there and having somebody else come in. I mean, I'm trying to understand his point of view. My point of view is that um, that we have a number of owner occupied dwellings of this sort in town. Is that not correct? Yep. And yes. as such, what, what this, um, what this logically means to me is that if, is that anyone else who is an owner occupied dwelling says, well, you know, I might move at some point why don't I do this now and avoid what I'm in, in an attempt to avoid something in the future? I, this is a good case for, um, for a non-owner occupied dwelling, particularly the fact that nothing is changing. However, it is an owner occupied dwelling and he doesn't really need a special permit. All he needs is a site plan review. And um, so it makes, it makes no sense to me to be asking for special permits and waivers when you don't need them. I would, I would rather see when he comes back, if we wanna suggest that, that if he has site plan review that we would, and nothing at all is changing and it becomes non-owner occupied then we only review those, those documents that are additionally needed. But mm -hmm. he's gonna to have to do that anyway. So I, I just right. think that um, it's not his fault. He was, I believe he was led in the wrong direction and should have just gone to site plan review and been done with. So it might be to his advantage to withdraw without prejudice then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because in the future, it's going to be looked at as a denial. Otherwise, yeah, it should, right? Absolutely, it should be. It would be to Mr. Sampath's advantage to ask for this to be withdrawn and to go for site plan review. And the one question I would have is: site plan review is a less um, formal or less. There's less procedures and less um, bureaucratic, for lack of a better term. Um, processes you have to go through for um, a site plan review than for a special permit. Is that correct? Um, I, I would say perhaps, perhaps they wouldn't ask for the lease in the complaint response plan. Um, it's really up to the, the, the planning board themselves, the planning board. but it, it would be in essence the same application and submissions, um, but there may be some subtle differences 
Um, it was, you know, to staff's, you know, understanding that that it was the applicant's intention to live off site um, in the near future, and that this wasn't going to be a, a permanent uh, owner occupied duplex. And so that was why it was recommended uh, to go through this path since if it was going to just be sort of six months to up to a year um, while um, the applicant was trying to figure out, you know, where to relocate. But if it, it, if it does sound like this could be, it sounds now that it, this is kind of up in the air that maybe you'll move, but maybe you won't. It, it does seem that it might be better suited um, to do go, go through the site plan review if, if your intention is to make this an owner occupied duplex on a permanent basis. But so, it, it, but please correct us if, if if that's incorrect. But that's that's what we're hearing. We're hearing that you are unsure of what you want to do. Um, that this may be permanently an owner occupied duplex, or maybe in the future you'll reconsider it. Uh, Mr. Sam, for, yep. sure. Thank you, Mr. Judge. You know, it's hard to, uh, I'm sorry to go back to the point that, I mean, nothing is permanent, right? I know I'm not going anywhere, right? If you had asked me a year ago, would I move from South Amherst? I would have said no way in hell, right? So I mean, there's nothing that we know mm -hmm. for sure. I know that I'm not going anywhere. My kids are 11 and 14, right? So there's no question to me moving. There, the, and I go back to the point. The only reason I did this was because I thought it was a good idea to have it in place if and when in the future, because I do not want to spend three or four thousand dollars that Ian did and spent all that money getting this application together. So <clears throat> if we're going to go to a site plan review and if that's what you recommend, I'm happy to do it. But if I'm going to have to spend a fortune, small fortune to get these things in place again, then that's unfortunate. No, you wouldn't. It's the same materials. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, you so, would be, in essence, you may need to fill out a new form, a planning board form, but the same site plan, all those um, supporting materials would be the same exact information. It's just that you would specifically be asking for owner-occupied duplex. And so what that means is as long as it's an owner-occupied duplex and the planning board approves that, you know, you you would be able to live there, but in, in the future, when you officially decide to move off site and make that a non-owner occupied duplex, then you would need to come before the zoning board of appeals and ask for uh, approval of that of um, that special permit. Would I be able to okay. use the same documents I had, Maureen? But, you know, we can't promise you that. I to a large extent, no, well, wait, Mr. Sampath, we can't promise you that. But if that occurs in the near future, we do take, you could ask for a waiver for a new site, for a waiver for a new site plan. You could submit the same management plan. You could ask for a waiver from a landscape plan. Those, and given the history, those might be approved by the board. And given, you can make your case. We do grant waivers for these things. So here, I, I, not all the time. So we can't, I'm not going to promise you that you don't have to do it. I think if the board members are sitting in the same time and you come by, I think there's an inclination to do that, but I can't promise that. And nobody could promise that. So it seems to me that if, if we look at this, the best thing I would recommend, and it's your decision, um, but it seems to me the best thing for you is to ask for this to be withdrawn without prejudice. That gives you the ability to come back and ask for a special permit if within, you know, any time you want for a non-owner occupied, pursue a site review plan because you don't have the votes for it and you don't want, I don't think the votes are there and you don't want a denial. A denial means you can't come back to us in for two years, okay? Uh, for this specific plan. So you don't want to do that. So my suggestion is that you ask for it to be withdrawn without prejudice, you pursue a site plan review, and should your circumstances change in the future, work with staff to make sure that it that the documents that have that haven't that the situations that haven't changed are identified and can reduce the cost to you of an application for a special permit to allow a non-owner occupied property. 
that's what I would suggest is the best course for you. I, I um, appreciate I, I appreciate. No, I appreciate your, I mean, I'm looking for guidance here. I'm not here to take advantage of, the, of anything right. or I just want to follow <clears throat> the process, right? So uh, I completely agree. And since, uh, it, I just want to clarify when you said, so is there anything I need to do now that I'm living there? So this current zoning application uh, permit expires. So we just leave things as is. And in the future, if I want to change it to a non-owner occupied, I provide a site plan review, assuming not a whole lot has changed. Is that correct? I'm, I'm not sure I followed that. What I would tell you is that what you should do is apply for a site plan review as soon as possible because you want to be want to get, have that done uh, by the planning board. And then if you wish to change in the future, deal with, you can work with staff to try to minimize the uh, documents that need to be created or um, con contracted. Sure. Uh, and can you, can you please tell me what a site plan review is for? What, what does that entail? Like, what, what does it give me? What, like, what is a site plan review? I think uh, Maureen is yeah, so, with this more than so I Yeah, so a site plan review is um, an application through the planning board. Uh, the use, which is a non, which is an owner occupied duplex, is a use by right. And so the planning board would be reviewing the site plan. Um, and so they would be looking at your, you know, the submittals that you've already given, you know, looking at the parking and the landscaping and where the lights are, those sorts of things, um, opposed to the planning board, which, uh, opposed to the ZBA, which is also looking at the site plan, but they're also looking at the use um, and the use is allowed by special permit. And so the zoning board of appeals has the discretionary power to see if that use is, you know, compatible and um, with the neighborhood and if it's, you know, in harmony with the neighborhood and you know, whether it would be, you know, you know, more or, or less de detrimental to the neighborhood. So the zoning board of appeals is really trying to see is, is the, the use, is that compatible with the neighborhood and with the town, opposed to the planning board, which is looking at a buy right use. And so they're just looking at the site plan and sort of the, um, the specifics of how, the, how everything's laid out. And that is more or less sort of the distinction between a, a site plan and a special permit application. Um, and then just to add, so the planning board, again, would be looking at similar, if not all of the documents that you provided to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And in the future, if you decide that you do want to move offsite um, and seek a special permit for a non-owner occupied duplex, if those submissions um, uh, that you've provided, if there are no changes, um, to it, um, then it probably would be reasonable for you to resubmit the same information. Um, so you wouldn't be st starting from scratch um, unless you are, you know, have some sort of elaborate plans of, I don't know, doing something. Um, unless you've significantly changed the, the property or the building. Yeah, which yeah. I, I'm sure yeah. you're not. But just to say, if you suddenly want to I don't, I, I couldn't really think of anything uh, unless I wanted it to be goofy of, you know, adding, I don't know, like a, a 40 foot, uh, foot, you know, slide going down your, your backyard or, or something elaborate, um, unless there's something substantially very different to the, the makeup of your property. Um, I'm sure that what you have submitted would be substantial, would be uh, sufficient for either the, the boards to review. Hey, thank you. So I'll work with you on the uh, site plan review. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry. Sorry for yep. any potential confusion on our behalf um, about this. So. So, so Mr. Sampath, if I could, under, if I understand you correctly, you're asking for uh, permission to withdraw this without prejudice. Is that correct? Yes, that is, Mr. Judge. Okay. So we have before us. Um, what I'd like to do is close the close the meet, uh, not close, I'd like to, to keep the meet, the public hearing open and move to a public meeting
to deal with the request from Mr. Sampak. Maureen. Uh, well, before you do that, uh, I, I think you should uh, see if there's any public comment. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Yes, <laughs> good point. I appreciate that. So if anyone has a public comment, they could uh, raise their virtual hand or um, press star nine, I think, uh, if they're calling in. And I'm not seeing anyone raising their hand. So I'd entertain a motion to keep the public hearing open while we move to the public meeting to discuss and vote on the question of withdrawal of this without prejudice. Do I have such a motion? Mr. Maxfield, do I have a second? Second. Second. Ms. Parks, um, roll call vote. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Ms. Max, Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. We're now in the public meeting portion uh, where we can discuss this, but I, I would entertain a motion to accept the request of the applicant to withdraw this without Bra's application without prejudice. Um, is it, is there, do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, uh, the vote occurs on the motion. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. All right, the motion to permit the withdrawal without prejudice has been approved by a four vote, uh, unanimous four votes. Um, so good luck, Mr. Sampath. Um, please continue to work with the staff and I would encourage you to um, do the site plan review as soon as possible so you can um, get that out of the way. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Thanks. Can I leave, Marty? Being... Okay. Okay. And I, yes. I, we can yes. be in touch tomorrow about um, setting you up with the planning board. And so you would be working, um, Chris Brestrup is the staff liaison to the planning board, but I, I can put you in touch with her um, tomorrow or on Monday to set right. you up with that. So luckily everything that you've done is good to go. So we would just need to set up the meeting. <laughs> so I'm right. sorry for the yes, you live, live and yeah. learn. Live Thanks a learn. lot, Murray. Okay. Yep. We'll talk Thanks. soon. Bye. Good luck, Mr. Sampath. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Bye. The, um, the next order of business on the is um, any public comment on matters not before the board tonight. Maureen, do we have anybody who wishes to speak on a subject that is not before the board tonight? Um, no. Um, there's no other item but um... and, and the other issue is any any other business not anticipated um, within the last 48 hours no other than just to say we we are um getting new uh, additional members uh yes, another additional few, members yes um a uh, full member gilbert is his last name john gilbert maybe um yep. Let me see here. A uh, John Gilbert. Mr. John Gilbert, yeah. And he'll be um, a full member. And then as Mr. Uh, Meadows will become a full member. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Craig, Greg, for stepping up to do that. And uh, for associate members, we'll have a Eric uh, Crotran, like maybe, is his or pronunciation. Cochran. Cochran. I don't know. Yeah. And then a Karen Winter will be another uh, associate member. And so um, I don't have their, you know, phone numbers or email addresses, but uh, once they're sworn in, um, I will uh, like to suggest having a administrative meeting, really for them, but for everyone, just to kind of go over, you know, the roles and responsibilities of being on the board and kind of just, and then actually that might be a good opportunity to have a tutorial about going through like a site plan looking at a site plan and understanding um, like a plan set, looking at, at the site plan and the landscape plan, uh, like a stormwater uh, yep. plans, things of that nature. So we could um, deal with that. And then if folks have any sort of general questions, uh, we could 
um, that would be a good opportunity to have sort of a, um, a Q and a, um, but, but uh, so stay tuned. So maybe that could be in, well, we're already in July. So uh, maybe in the next month or two, um, we could hold an administrative meeting and I can certainly um, send out a doodle poll um, to figure out when, when um, that meeting could be had. And um, one other note, we don't have any applications that I know of <laughs> that are um, that um, are scheduled for the July 22nd meeting. So with that, I'm gonna say that uh, we're going to cancel that meeting. And then, so the next meeting would be August 12th. And we know that the College Street application would be um, continued until that date. And perhaps we'll have other applications that come in in time for that date as well. So I think that's- And that may be an opportunity. If there's no other applications, that may be the opportunity for an administrative meeting to piggyback upon that. Yeah, we exactly. Might be able to do that. Yep. yep, yep. And um, although I don't really have any more information about the whole virtual meetings versus in-person meetings, I do know that the town manager said that will um, that boards and committees will be meeting virtually until September, and and then at that time we'll reevaluate both like the state regulations on it, um, most importantly, and uh, and then see if we have any flexibility about you know continuing to hold virtual meetings or and or if they could be hybrid meetings or if they have to be in person. So I'm sure as, as the weeks and months go on, we'll, we'll figure that out and I'll certainly let everyone know as, as that information comes available. Ms. Parks. If we'd like to give input about that, is there anyone specific to uh, direct the comments to about continuing, continuing with Zoom? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you could certainly, uh, I would say email the town manager. Um, and I, I think it's like a generic town manager at amherstma.gov. And you can certainly copy me on the email if you want. Um, or you could certainly just email it to me and then I can forward it to that to the office. So whatever you feel comfortable about with, rather. Okay. Do you know, Maureen, would it be all or nothing? In other words... I don't know. That's is it yeah, I really capable of being both. I think that the town would like that um, as an option. So for folks, uh, so um, I think the town would like that. What does that actually mean? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I think the town would love to have the flexibility both for board members, but and also for members of the of the public to choose whether they come in person or or um, tune in virtually. So, um, you know, the most important thing is is just we need to make sure that we meet the open meeting law, and then um, that will help sort of dictate um, where the sort of flexibility can be held had so um but i i do know that the the town the town manager would would love to um you know be as flexible as possible but we just need to make sure that we abide by the law so um yeah, yeah. hybrid is would require lots of bandwidth yeah. so that's that's the key thing i think just for the town who we have the bandwidth for. All right, I, I myself would much rather have the board in person more often than less. I think it would be great for us to actually be in a room to work with each other, see each other's body language, actually have, I think that would be a, a much more, we'd be a better board uh, if that could happen. And we could still find a way to get public comment from perhaps Zoom or other not in person public comments um, to increase the transparency and accessibility of our meetings to the public. But I like the notion of us getting together as a board physically as often as we can. Yeah. Um, all right, any other uh, comments or questions? 
I'm just going to say, yeah, no, I, I agree with that sentiment. I look forward to when we can actually all finally get in the room again together. It would be, uh, be nice. Hopefully, this new iteration of the board coming up will finally be able to have a chance to, uh, to all meet. Yeah, we spent a, we spent a year on virtual as a, and some members have had like Mr. Meadows and Mr. Maxfield, Ms. Parks, you've been totally Zoom. We've not met in person, I don't think. You're Zoom babies. <laughs> yeah, yes, you have. I, I, I'm sorry, you, you have Ms. Parks prior to the, in your first term. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody, unless there's anything else, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Maureen, it looks like you're going to suggest something that we're missing. Oh, just um, I, um, I will be uh, working on the decisions from the last meeting, which was about the cemetery and two other pro applications, perhaps. So I'm going to type those up in the near future and we'll send out an email hopefully next week for you guys to review and to come in to sign. So just uh, um, uh, stay tuned for that. So, um, and, and for some of you that may be away, um, you know, we do allow, although I have asked multiple times to our town attorney about e-signatures, um, I will ask again about having an official uh, comment about that. I might re reach out to the Registry of Deeds to see if they have an answer. But in the interim, if you're ever away or just very busy for work and you can't sign a decision, it is legal for me to sign on your behalf and then I initial your name. So I just wanted to just mention that if, if, if there's ever a time that you're, you're, you think that you're gonna be away for an extended time period, that is an option. Great. Okay, well, Maureen, take care of your back. Um, Thank get you. better. Um, everybody's had back problems, who's had back problems knows that's awful. So take care of yourself. Thank and you. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I have one? So, so moved. So moved. I've, I've, got, I've got three of them. <laughs> I've got three. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. Should we do in unison? <laughs> second. <laughs> All right. There's no discussion on the motion to adjourn. I vote aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. We are adjourned. We will see you on August 12th. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great Thank month. Thank you. Good night.